Hello everyone and welcome back to Jus de Rose. As you can see, I'm standing in front of my perfume collection. It has since expanded since the video that I posted about it. And today I want to share with you my designer fragrance collection. I love niche perfumes and I talk about niche fragrances so much on this channel. However, there are some great designer scents and I wanted to share these with you today. So if you want to know what my designer fragrance collection looks like, then make sure to keep on watching. So I'd like to organize my fragrances based on occasion and use rather than by brand. It looks so much better by brand. It's much more aesthetically pleasing. However, for me, I find it more useful to organize them by occasion so that if I'm in a particular mood, I know what kind of fragrances like from the get go I will use when I'm in the mood for it. So the way that I've organized my collection is by autumn and winter fragrances, spring and summer, everyday perfumes, special occasion fragrances, and then also date night evening scents. So normally my designer fragrances are interspersed with my niche perfumes. However, for the purpose of this video to make things much more simple, I have all of the designers here on this shelf. And so I will be going through each of these individually and we're going to start off with autumn and winter scents. Okay, so here on the far right left hand side, I guess for you, is my autumn fragrances. So at the top here, we have a gorgeous fragrance from Christian Louboutin, which is called Louis Rouge. It is more of an expensive fragrance, I'm not gonna lie, but Christian Louboutin is a designer, so that's why it falls within this category. So Louis Rouge is a gorgeous, spicy vanilla fragrance with a touch of iris. If you are a fan of Lune Féline, this fragrance is gonna be right up your alley. To be fair, the two are very similar, but I find with Louis Rouge, it is softer, more gentle than Infidian, and it has the addition of Iris. I also have some Prada here, Prada Candy, very sweet perfume, which is why I put it in the autumn and winter section. If I'm in the mood for like a candy sweet scent, then I'll reach out for it. What I like about it is that it has a powdery finish, which is very common to a lot of Prada fragrances. And like that, it doesn't make it too sickly sweet, which I like. And then in the back as well, we have my latest obsession, which is Baby Cat from YSL. Now this is a gorgeous, leathery, spicy vanilla. If you like sexy, vanillas so intense really luxurious this is one to check out this is going to be part of my rotation for sure this autumn and winter time in the next level of the shelf we have three fragrances from the confidential series of Carolina Hera Yes, another pricey one. And there's two of my favorite fragrances. Actually, I have three, but these are amongst the top three that I absolutely adore wearing. So we have Gold Incense and Gold Mire Absolu. And the reason why I'm talking about these two perfumes because I like to layer them together. So Gold Mire Absolu smells like oh, such an indulgent, luxurious, powdered chocolate. So imagine like those luxury chocolates. You open up a box of those chocolates and you have some of these with like a powdered cacao on top. That is what this perfume smells like. Gorgeous chocolate fragrance and then gold incense, an incense fragrance infused with a lot of vanilla and sweeter notes. It is beautiful. This Both of them can be worn alone, but honestly together they are incredible and make like the most delicious amber sweet fragrance ever. If I'm like craving like a sweet tooth moment that feels very luxurious, I will layer these two together. And then the other Carolina Hera fragrance I have is called Mystery Tobacco. This is a very thick and syrupy tobacco fragrance. To be fair, I don't wear it very often because it is really intense and I find it to be a little bit more masculine leaning. Beautiful tobacco, but it is like a boss tobacco. Like you have to be okay with wearing a super strong fragrance and you have to be really in the mood for it. So I don't reach out for it that much. Next up, we have some Maison Margiela replica fragrances. Of course, we have my beloved by the fireplace, a beautiful, smoky, woody, sweet perfume that literally smells like you are toasting marshmallows at a crackling fireplace. That is what this fragrance smells like. It is incredible, super strong projection and longevity as well. Next to it, we have Jazz Club, this boozy, elegant fragrance, a little bit sweet as well. Much more chic and elegant, I would say, than by the fireplace and perhaps less polarizing. Both fragrances are great from Maison Marjola. And that concludes the autumn and winter fragrances. Moving in 
to spring and summer fragrances. We have, of course, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, a staple, fresh, citrusy, aquatic fragrance, great for the gym. Again, it's not one that I reach out for that much anymore, but it is nice to have in my collection. Once in a while, I do like to smell it and spritz it on a hot summer day. Right next to it, we have a limited edition from Jean-Paul Gaultier, which is called La Belle Fleur Terrible. This is exclusive to the fragrance shop in the UK. You may still be able to get it. I am not 100% sure. Anyways, I'll put all the links to the fragrances in the description box. La Belle Fleur Terrible is my favorite by far of the existing La Belle range. This perfume is more on the fresher side. There's an aquatic, really like holiday breeze vibe about it. Imagine like you're on a cruise on holiday, this is what this perfume smells like. It's like a little bit sweet as well. There's like a tropical dimension. It's like fresh, very, very nice perfume from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Now, I do have a cheapie for once. It is the Roberto Cavalli Paradiso Azzurro. You can pick up for like a very reasonable price. Not the most crazy complex smelling perfume, but it smells really nice. It is quite a traditional structure, floral, a little bit fruity with like apple, so it's quite crisp. There's some musks and citruses as well in the background. Very easy going, fresh fragrance, like a no brainer summer perfume. If you just want to throw something on, get out the door without too much thinking about your fragrance, this is a great one for it. It's going to give you like clean girl summer vibes. Right next to it, we have Un Jardin sur la Lagune by Hermès. This fragrance, I think I recommended it at the beginning of my YouTube channel. It is a fantastic floral woody fragrance that has a salty note as well. So it's aquatic, salty, beautiful, like some woods in the background, a little bit creamy as well. My bottle is actually engraved and there was like an engraver when I went out to purchase it, which is why it looks so pretty. Really lovely, underrated fragrance from Hermes and also super long lasting. Next, we have an icon from Prada. It is L'Infusion d'Iris, a beautiful, fresh iris fragrance powdery, feminine, very elegant and chic. This is like a must have for the springtime. That's when I really enjoy wearing it the most. The only issue I have with it is its longevity, which is really not that great. And it doesn't project that much as well, which is a shame, but it is nonetheless a beautiful fragrance. And then we're gonna go into the creamy coconut tea fragrances, which I love. And the first one is Tom Ford Soleil Wait, what is it called? Orchid Soleil. This one unfortunately has been discontinued, so I'm saving it because it is, oh, this is, has to be my favorite from the um, flankers of the Black Orchid range. It is absolutely incredible. It is like ylang ylang, white florals, delicious chestnut accord, some amber and vanilla in the base. This is so sexy and it's like the fragrance that you want to wear at sunset if you have like a hot day. Like this one is such a keeper. I really wish they didn't discontinue it. Another great fragrance for like, let's like beach inspired, if you will, is Soleil Blanc by Tom Ford. This to me is the most luxurious smelling coconut perfume. Your desert island Maldives kind of vibe scent, if you will, is very, very luxurious. Now, we have a new discovery from this year, which is called Chloé Nomade Eau Naturelle Eau de Parfum. This fragrance is a big, big love. And in my opinion, the flanker is so much better than the original. So this is a fruity white floral amber. You have jasmine. There's also some mirabelle and also some date in the top, which I think is so interesting. I haven't smelled dates in designer fragrances. It's more of like a niche ingredient and it adds a nice touch of sweetness to the perfume. This is just so balmy and it feels like a warm summer afternoon. Like imagine like you're walking somewhere in like Greece and you have this beautiful view of the sea, cobbled streets, some like jasmine in the, like the smell of jasmine in the air. This is what this perfume makes me think of. It is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I absolutely love this one from Chloe. And then we have one that I don't like so much, but it was gifted to me. And nonetheless, some of you may enjoy it. It is Alien Goddess. Now, the reason why I don't like it is because it is too intense in like the coconuts and vanilla side of things. It's, there's just too much going on. It doesn't work for me. It's too cloying. However, I know a lot of people will enjoy it. Um, I prefer other fragrances within this realm, so I don't really reach out for it. But the new version, the Intense that just came out is fabulous.
the everyday fragrance category and this one really reflects my personal taste the most in fragrances. On an everyday basis, I love florals, fresh florals, white florals, transparent florals, creamy florals, whatever it is, like I'm a floral girl, but I also really like musks and so that is reflected in my everyday perfumes. So I'm gonna start off with Capeline from YSL. This is also part of the private collection, so again, higher price point. And I got this fragrance earlier this year for my birthday, and I have to say I'm disappointed with my purchase. Not because the fragrance smells bad, it actually smells really, really nice. It's just that it does not last. It like disappears after a few hours, which is such a shame because it is a beautiful fragrance. You have notes of ylang ylang, there's neroli, some salty notes, musks, like, oh, this fragrance is so gorgeous. It's stunning, stunning perfume, and yeah, just a shame it doesn't last on my skin. Next up, we have have this new perfume from Furla. It is called Authentica and this perfume is a really easy going, fresh, fruity, musky floral. You have peony, cherry blossom, some musks. There's also a little bit of pear going on, some raspberry. So it's very pretty, feminine, easy going perfume. This is like a no brainer fragrance for me on an everyday basis. If I just want to smell fresh and feminine and clean and just like with for the love of florals then i would wear authentica by furla so this is also a new release for this year now sometimes i'm in the mood for a sweet floral fragrance and so i like to wear a flower bomb now this is a classic of fragrance i used to wear it during my teenage years also at the beginning of university, so I have lots of memories attached to this perfume. I really like to wear it during the day, but also transition into the evening with it. So if I'm in the mood for like something that is sweet and just like reminds me of great memories, then I will reach out for Flower Bomb by Victor and Rolf. And then we have some Dior here. We have Miss Dior Rose Essence. This is the new addition to the Miss Dior collection. And this is a special perfume for me. I wouldn't say this is like an everyday scent. The reason why it's a special fragrance is because I purchased it as a little gift to myself for reaching the milestone of 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you all for your support. And yeah, I just wanted to get a little gift for myself. This perfume is stunning. A very bougie rose water, very expensive. <laughs> for uh, what it is, but it is a very nice quality rose water from Grasse, made of Santafolia roses. It's delicate, it's soft, it doesn't last on the skin, but it doesn't matter because it smells really lovely. It's very dure, feminine, elegant, chic, like this, this is like incredible in my eyes. Then we have another Miss Dior, which I absolutely adore. It is Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet. Now this one is very different to the original Miss Dior, which is on the sweeter side. This is not too sweet, really it's more on the fresh side. So it's like fresh, clean florals and this is like your clean girl vibe perfume. I actually have a few fragrances that are within like the clean girl vibe. If I want something that is light, refreshing, if I've just taken a shower, I will pop on Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet. And within that clean girl category, I also have Chanel Chance Eau Tendre, this pink bottle, pretty feminine, easygoing, no-brainer fragrance. Also within that realm, we have my beloved Musque Noir for Her by Narciso Rodriguez. This is a gorgeous, fruity, musky scent, just a touch of plum. It's not like overly fruity, but just a touch, which makes it like really special, I find. So I like to wear this fragrance after I've taken my bath at nighttime, just before I go to bed. Oh, I just... It makes me so happy, it smells really good. And within that realm, there's a few Narciso Rodriguez fragrances. We have Pure Musque for her, which is like your gorgeous white musky scent. Oh, this is so nice. Touch floral as well. And this one, actually all of them, but this one in particular is great for layering. If you want like a pop of powder with like a light floral nuance, this perfume is absolutely fabulous. And the final fragrance that I have within the Narciso Rodriguez line is the original Narciso Rodriguez for her, the Eau de Toilette, which is this black bottle. This can be worn all year round. It can be worn on an everyday basis to the office because it's not a fragrance that is offensive. It smells very good, but it's not 
one that is like gonna intoxicate a room. I feel like it's a very likable scent as well. And it can easily transition into the night. There's like a little bit of a sexiness factor going on. So if you have like a date or you're going for drinks and you just wanna feel like really great and confident, then this is another great one that I like to wear. So if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I'm a fan of creamy white florals. And within that category, we have Twitty d'Hermes that is great for every day. It's chic, spicy to bros with some ginger, which makes it very unique. We also have Chanel number no. five, an icon. This is not a fragrance that I wear on an everyday basis. It's more of a special occasion fragrance and you kind of need to be in the mood to wear this perfume. But I finally learned to appreciate it after lots of years and I like to wear it for more formal special occasions. Now there is one Chanel fragrance that is very close to my heart, that's very special. And I could wear it on an everyday basis, but for me, this fragrance is just too special for that. It is 1957 and this was my wedding scent. So this was for the civil wedding. I had two perfumes because as you do, you have two perfumes for your wedding. This was my scent for the more formal side of things. I love this perfume. It is so beautiful. It is soft. Oh, you have some musks, some iris, it's cocooning. Like this perfume just makes me feel great and really beautiful. So for me, this is a very special fragrance and I'll wear it if I have like a special occasion or a special date with my husband. This is one that I would reach out for. And finally, we have the evening date night fragrance category. All the fragrances are here except this fragrance here. This is the new Dior J'adore perfume that I just received. I cannot believe Dior sent me a fragrance. Oh my gosh, this is baffling. But anyways, I will be doing a review on this perfume towards the end of the month in my monthly update of new fragrances. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But for now, it is sitting here. Back to the date night fragrances. In the back here, we have some Carolina Good Girl fragrances. My personal favorite is Very Good Girl, which is the Red Bottle. This one I like because it does have the creamy DNA of the original Good Girl, that like creamy almondy thing going on. But you have some rose and vetiver, and a little bit of berries as well, which I find makes it much more wearable than the original Good Girl. It's not as common as the original Good Girl, so it's nice, like not everyone's gonna smell like this. And if you also like Delina Exclusif, you need to get your nose on this. It's a, I would say, not a dupe, but it's along the similar lines and it is more affordable. We also have some I Want You in the back floral fruity fragrance, very sexy. This fragrance, I'm not typically drawn to it, but my husband seems to like it, so I wear it and I get compliments when I wear this fragrance. And it is a sexy scent, to be fair. Then we have some Louboutin as well with Luby Kiss. This is a beautiful, creamy, white floral scent, tuberose, jasmine. It is very opulent, and this is like a true white floral. If you love white florals, definitely try out this fragrance. It is gorgeous, and it's another fragrance that is great for layering. Next, we have some, oh, actually, I forgot some Armani fragrances. We have Si Passionné which I wear on an everyday basis. And this is a newish acquisition. I like the fact that it is like a fresh, floral, a little bit fruity DNA to me. This reminds me of like a luxury shampoo or like luxury hair care salon that like smell in your hair that you can never replicate at home. This is what this perfume makes me think of. So it's another great one for everyday use. So that was just a little side note. The original Armani C for going out. And then I have two Carolina private collection fragrances as well. Santal Ruby and Emerald Musk. Emerald Musk is a leathery iris fragrance and my favorite, favorite, favorite fragrance from that line is Santal Ruby. This is a beautiful, spicy, creamy tuberose fragrance. There's some cinnamon, there's some amber at the background. It is such a stunning perfume. If you are a fan of Rouge Malakite, you're gonna love this fragrance. And speaking of, we have also Rouge Malakite by Armani Privé. This is more of a balmy tuberose. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. I always say like the dry down is so much better than the opening. Ladies, if you have this fragrance, I recommend you spray this like one to two hours before going out. This it's just incredible. That dry down is so, so sexy. 
absolutely adore it and no it is not discontinued at least in the UK you can still find it everywhere in store and also online we also have in the back a fragrance that is very nostalgic to me because it was my first clubbing scent slash first grown-up going out perfume that I stole from my mom. But anyways, I bought it many times over the years. It is Hugo Boss Deep Red. This is such a great, affordable as well, designer perfume. And this one is for those of you, if you don't like like sweet floral fruity fragrances, this is a great one to check out. It's more on like the floral, woody, musky territory. There's some like blood orange going on as well. This is such an enigmatic scent. Like there's no other designer fragrance that smells like this and it smells really, really nice. We also have some Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances, Classique, Essence de Parfum and La Belle. I don't wear La Belle too much because to me it is too sweet. It smells like a caramelized pear. So it may appeal to some of you, but for me, it's like too much. However, I really, really love Classique Essence de Parfum which unfortunately has been discontinued, but it is like a gorgeous, sexy, orange blossom, ambery, sweet fragrance. It's just gorgeous. Maybe one day they will bring it out again, but for now I will cherish the one that I have here. And then there is two, three more fragrances. We have Black Orchid from Tom Ford, a staple, and also of course Alien by Mugler. The last perfume is Kenzo. This is the new release, it is called Kenzo Flower L'Absolu. So this just launched as well and I will be reviewing it in my monthly new launch review. So stay tuned for that. And that is it for today's video. You have seen my entire designer fragrance collection. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in your comments down below what is your favorite designer fragrance. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching and remember, spread the fragrant love.